Good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to uh, Dumb SEO Questions, uh, episode 317. Each week uh, we meet here to answer the questions asked on the, uh, well, for as long as it lasts, the uh, Dumb SEO Questions community on Google+, and uh, also on our active and uh, happy uh, and uh, interested uh, Facebook group, uh, um, Dumb SEO Questions. 5,016 members and growing. Shame about the 40,000 we're losing from Google+. Plus. Anyway, um, with us tonight, we have David Rosam. Uh, David is an internet marketer. He's based in uh, the uh, sunny south of the UK. Um, in West Sussex, um, and uh, David um, is a, a copywriter and uh, uh, an SEO copywriter of many years standing. Find David at davidrosam.com. You can find Tim Kappa at onlineownership.com. Tim is uh, a CEO of Online Ownership and... Uh, He's also a Google top contributor on the uh, Google My Business community. Tim uh, is based in Corby, about 100 miles uh, north of London. Okay, so our first uh, question tonight is titled uh, Choosing a domain, a domain Name for SEO, which sadly is not as important as it used to be. My mouse has just disappeared. Now, oh, there it is. Okay. Johnny Cryer asks, uh, I need some help on picking a domain name as far as ranking in the search engines. Which would be better, mysite.review or mysitereview.com? <coughs> well, um, neither is better than the other for ranking the search engines. That's... Uh something that's uh, gone gone in the past somewhere um i go for my site review.com though um i think people tend to like dot coms um and there have been reports of problems with some of these these longer tlds um such as review or um london city airport or whatever you get um so um, I would go for the simplicity and the familiarity of a, a dot com if, if you've got a, uh, a nice one that fits with your branding. Yeah, dot com all day for, for me. Um, OK, so we call this one covered. We've got uh, 15 qu questions to answer tonight. We're losing Tim in 15 minutes. Oh. Okay, let's um, go to the next. Um, Andrew Rains uh, asked the question titled Heading Tags in Page Footer. He goes on to ask, uh, should heading tags such as H2, H3, H4 be avoided in the footer for uh, better on-page SEO for a retail website? Most sites use H3 or lower tags for about us, contact us, help, etc., which do not have any SEO value. CSS uh, could be used uh, in lieu of those tags. Is he asking a question or uh, giving mm. an answer? Um, well, I wouldn't put heading tags uh, in a footer. Um, I would just... Uh... I would just use uh, CSS, as he says in his statement. Um, um, hmm. Yeah, what is he saying? Um, if he's making a statement, then I agree with him, or last bit. Um, if he's asking the question, the answer is um, don't use don't use heading tags uh, in your footer because that's not what they're for. Okay. By the way, I love Michael Martinez's answer. In fact, I love all of his answers. Uh, um, and I'd like to call out Michael Martinez and uh, 
uh, all the other guys who give answers uh, on the WCA questions Facebook group through the week, um, give answers instantly, and, and we come along to review and uh, um, at our, our bit once, once a week. Um, okay, so we have anything to add to this one? I think it's pretty well covered. Uh, if, if it's not covered in what we've said, it's certainly covered by Michael Martinez. All right, number three on our run list from JL Favario, who has um, recently uh, started a, um, a Facebook group, um, oddly enough, called Dumb WordPress Questions. Um, but um, JL Favario, um, is um, uh, doing a um, sincere thing. I wish him all the best with it. Um, anyway, he's got a question today. It's uh, it's titled Ever Perform ADA Compliance Standards. Um, he says, due to the government shutdown, the ADA compliance line is unavailable. So I thought I'd check in with you guys. Uh, have you ever performed uh, ADA uh, compliance standards on a client site? Did it conflict with any SEO practices? Um, since there are too many different levels of ADO, ADA compliance, how do you know which issues to focus on and which to ignore? Um. I've, um, have I, am I on? Yes, I am. Um, I've never done this. Um, so I would, uh, I noticed there was some, uh, what seemed to, seemed to be some uh, learned answers going on um, on Facebook there. Um, so I, I'm just going to say, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would hope that ADA compliance would not conflict would it conflict with SEO practices um, because they're both about user experience to some extent, but uh, uh, I don't know. Tim, you got any ideas? Oh, there's Richard. Yes, we've been joined by Richard Hearn. Uh, how are you, buddy? Uh, all good. Uh, terrific, Richard. Um, uh, what's what's the the, the comment? Uh, uh, he uh, it deals with upper echelon uh, sites. Uh, he can be found on the internet at redcardinal.ie. Um, okay, let's go to the next. We've got fifteen questions tonight. We're losing Tim in about twelve minutes. Um, Let's go to the next. Number four on your run list. Um, do you have the URL for our run list, Richard? Um, no. If you want to pop it into a, into the chat, I can open it in a different different monitor. Yeah, um, I'll do that for you. Now, th this one you need to be logged in. So if you can't remember your password, I'll give you the the, the other one. Perfect, thank you. All good? Okay. All right, uh, this question from Job and John. Um, it's uh, titled Interlink, Interlink in the Footer versus Sidebar. Um, which one do you think is better? I don't think it makes any difference, does it? Uh, um, no, no. between sites is it generally ignored um, probably but there's so many facets of this because for instance is your sidebar shown on a mobile view is your site in mobile first indexing there's a lot of different sort of nuance to this it's funny but I would imagine that something that appears higher in the page and potentially within the initial viewport might have a little bit more weight than something that's in the footer which very few people go to um, and actually, the answer to this really is that, that that a link within content is going to be better than both of those. 
Thank you, Richard. Anybody else? Okay, let's go to the next number five on our run list um, from Ryan Logan, titled Permalink Structure. Um, Ryan asks, hello, can you tell me which structure would be the best approach? Uh, this is for a business directory in the US, which may grow to include other countries. Uh, thank you. He gives a, um, a, um, an example, country slash state slash city. Oh, no, he gives a few, few examples. I won't read them out. They can be seen on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. See, Tim Kapper uh, has uh, been busy through the week answering. Yeah, so for this person here, I, I mean, I wouldn't have country. I, I wouldn't use country in it. Um, you know, if you're actually only serving one country at the minute, I wouldn't have country in, the, in, in, in my overall um, structure. <laughs> um, and based on schema, it would be state, city, and then the business. So that's my preference. And keeping that, it would be very easy to, to migrate, to expand that, to add the country in later on, so that if you did include countries, they'd just be in separate subfolders with the exact same schema. Yeah, that sounds good enough for me. And um, thank, thank you for the guys um, through the week answering these questions on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. All right, uh, number uh, six on our run list, Craig Anthony asked a question titled, should I switch to WordPress? He said, my coder built me a site in HTML and it's been great for the past few years, but he is no longer able to help me with the site and I now need full control. I do not know any code. I need a WordPress version of my site, something that I can personally update and change, etc. Do I scrap my site and start afresh? I'd rather not, um, but uh, what do I do? My site has 140 pages currently, but most of these pages are weak due to to not many words um, and on the majority of the pages. I have a writer willing to help increase the on-page content and keywords, etc. but I'm stuck for the best move. I want to be able to upload new images and products and I can't do any of this at present. So a WordPress, which is what I need. I have no idea what I should be doing now to move forward. Please advise. If he wants to um, to throw away the shackles of having a um, a hard coded site and needing um, a coder to to build new pages for him, uh, then he will have to go to some kind of content management system, or at least he he should go to some form of content management system. WordPress is but one, um, and WordPress is possibly nicer to use than some, and worse to use than others. Um, if, um, if the questioner is, um, wanting to, to find reasonably priced or, uh, and, or, um, expert help, um, fairly easily, WordPress is a great idea. There's millions of us out here who know, know about WordPress, although it's not something I, I do, um, as, uh, as, for, 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 uh, as a service, but you know, we we know WordPress as we come across it so often. Um, so yes, I would say go to WordPress. Um, you can, um, you can. I think Michael Martinez has got a um, got um, a, a good point here. Um, you can copy the pages manually as your time permits. If you if you get to um, if you get to to know a little bit of coding, you should be able to pick up the um, the, the the bit of the the, the page code that uh, that just defines your content, your uh, your your your, uh, your your textual content. By the sound of it, that's what you've got at the moment, um, and uh, cut and paste that into the uh, into the code view in uh, in WordPress. Um, and it should uh, it should just understand 
um, the, uh, the, the the HTML you've got, and this says something weird about it. But if you've got an old uh, an old um, hard coded site, I would guess there's a good chance that you can just cut and paste the uh, the, the the relevant stuff um, into the relevant view in in WordPress in your your way. So do it do it step by step, as Michael says um and ask questions if you're not finding the right uh the right part of your existing pages to uh to paste into wordpress um i think you could go on for hours about this but ba basically move to a cms wordpress uh is is good for all sorts of reasons provided you keep it up to date and don't let the uh the hackers in um yeah someone's going to say i'll oh, use xyz cms but um um i think wordpress is as good as any and of course if you're going to sit down and um cut and paste 140 pages um you shouldn't uh, do that for more than 24 hours at a time uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right okay let's um move to the next uh, it's uh, number seven on our run list uh, it's from quame ofori on how to rank a youtube video on google wish i knew that um, the democracy <laughs> questions videos we have a, a 317 of them at the moment hmm. Well, you've got to follow what JL Favario says. Upload yeah. it, add captions, add primary keyword to video file name, add primary keyword in title, and so on and so, so forth. Uh, if you're interested, you can read it rather than listening to me read it. Um, it, uh, it, sounds, it sounds sensible to me. It's a long time since I tried to, to do this, so uh, but that sounds uh, about right to me. Right. The silence is deafening, so I'm going to move to the next. Uh, the, the only other thing just there is maybe interactions with the video. You might find that the more views you get, the, the higher it ranks, and the more interactions you get with it also may, may be a factor in here. Yeah, I think you're absolutely mm -hmm. right. Um, um, uh, initial um, interactions um, um, seem to make a difference with... Um, over the long term, um, if, if, if the initial reactions are high, and of course there's people on Fiverr and stuff like that that actually do this and Mechanical Turk and so on. Um, um, all right, let's go to the next. Number eight on our run list, it's from Jess Hodorowsky. Um, best practice for internal links in blogs it's, is its title. Um, he said, he asked, um, should it be a link to your home page or a link to a service page that is related to the blog topic? Should the post have a canonical address? I think he's mixing a few things up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Link to your home page or link to a service page that is related to the blog topic. I wonder though, is it is it internal links within the actual post as opposed to internal links on a template or on the page? Yeah. It's not quite clear. Uh, you know, you link to what makes sense based on what's in the post itself. I mean, if you're talking about your company, you're going to link it to your home page. If you're talking about a service or a category of some description then you'd you'd link to that particular service or category page um should the post have canonical address not quite sure really i'm not quite sure what 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 they're looking for there well i think it's reasonable to state though that uh, canonical um a link um on every page um it's good practice isn't it um, yeah. yeah makes it, 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 it through it up i beg your pardon 
So it can't generally do any harm unless you really screw it up. <laughs> but where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. All right. Um, let's go to the next. Number nine uh, on our run list from Natasha Tasha. And Natasha uh, asked the question titled search query in the URL and duplicate content issues. Is it true that um, Q or search query and URL structuring uh, is not recommended due to content duplicity issues? Um, um, I'm not sure what she means there. Um, but you guys obviously uh, would have a comment. I think that what she's talking about here is that you have a, like a search query, as in a, a query string on an URL, and Q is actually the the key for the query that Google uses. So that's what you'll see in a Google URL will be Q equals hello plus world, whatever the query is you've typed in. And um, I, I think what this person is probably asking is say you have Earl, which is Earl.html, and then you have Earl.html query string Q equals something. And um, if the Earl is different, that's the identifier of the resource, and it means that it should be a different resource. If the page is identical for both, well then you do you would have duplicate content issues. So this actually ties into actually canonicals as well, to be funny. Not quite sure what this person means, though. It's it's not not, not clear. I would say. Yeah, based on uh, our responses, um, Natasha should should ask her question again in a different way. Maybe we can give a more definitive answer. That be the best response. Yeah. Okay. So we're heading now to number ten on our run list. It's from Robert Hunt titled Keyword Stuffing in Meta Keywords. No answer. Um, <laughs> well, actually, David and I had a discussion on this question um, um, in the green room. And you know, questions like this are, are, are good uh, uh, because it gives us the chance to um, explain that, um, you know, like, say, for, in this case, like the Meta Keywords tag, gives us a chance to explain that um, nobody uses it anymore, or at least um, Google and Bing say they don't anyway. And yeah, mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I won't read um, uh, Robert's question um, altogether, but um, I'll just read the, the last line. Uh, in the meta keywords, I'm putting different years, e.g., and it gives a string of uh, years. Uh, he said, I'm worried about it. Um, being seen as keyword stuffing, but I want the different years since it does cover those years. Thoughts? Don't worry, don't worry, don't put any of those in the uh, in the keyword uh, tag. Uh, forget that the keyword tag exists because yeah. um, it doesn't anymore. Um, in effect, um, but, so forget it. But let, let's just take this. Let's just take the keywords tag out of this because this is a person who's obviously trying to build their content to rank or to mm. be found for some of these terms. So let, let's look beyond the keyword, the actual keyword tag. I mean, it's important that this person also is careful with their actual content because if they start actually, you know, stuffing these years in everywhere within their content, whether it's you know page titles. Uh, you know, on you know the the headings, the paragraphs, they may have problems there as well. I mean, it, it it's not that it doesn't make sense to include this. I mean, they may have a table that is saying, okay, this is a part for a particular Ford model, and it may there may be actually in the table. It might say, you know, what years? Like uh, the way cars work is that actually it could be a different model in each of those years. So it actually does make sense to include that because the models do change and they have different variants. They have all sorts of it's the the car industry is actually uh, quite interesting when you look at all the data that goes on. I've been looking to to work in some car industry stuff, but just be careful of how you try to integrate all these years within your content. 
I wouldn't make a different page. I wouldn't make a separate page for the 1990 versus 1991. I would have a page for the part, and then I would try to incorporate all the different years, all the different models, all the different variants within that page. But do it in a way that's useful to users. Don't try and just keep on pushing it in for the sake of it. Yeah. Thank you, Richard. OK, let's um, call that a good answer and uh, ask uh, this one from JLo, number 11 on our run list uh, on optimizing page speed. How to optimize a site speed if you're TA, well, what's TA mean, guys? Not sure. That's what I'm because they're also make, mentioning about field data and lab data, and uh, I'm not sure what what it is that's been used here. Um, TA came from how to optimize site speed if your TA came from a region that has low internet speed. Uh, I loved, um, I so loved I, Michael Martinez's answers. Uh, they're um, complete. What do you think, Richard? Uh, yeah, he's got some good stuff in there. I mean, the if you're using a hard drive for your web server, well. Yeah, that's let, let let's assume hosting out of it. Let's just assume the hosting is pretty good. Um, yeah, I mean, what what it sounds like. So what it sounds like, based on the question, is that this this guy has a site where most of his visitors are probably in in the developing or the third world, and they're on pretty limited bandwidth. So that's why he's saying that the lab data is saying that his site is fast so if he's testing it from a, a server in the developed world it's saying yeah your site is fast but the field data based on what his users are seeing it's actually loading quite slowly and that's purely due to the connections they're using either latency or just very very poor bandwidth um so yeah what he says there don't use images or use really small images it makes sense um you know, he could also be that a lot of his users are probably, they may even be using feature phones or something. We don't know. So, yeah, um, definitely Michael Martinez gives some good, 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 good advice there. Thank you, Richard. The, the other thing I'd uh, the, the tip in is, is to learn or Google for uh, a, um, a thing called Sprites. Um, and that, that at least gives the illusion of speed because it, it'll only download once for the home page and you'll have uh, images throughout your site um, being provided by the sprite. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would help a little bit. It, it's, you know, just, just looking at it, like it's not what he can, it, it has to be what the clients of his visitors so what their browsers are actually pulling, that's what he has to change. He can't really change anything on his side, as in on his server, to make things faster. He's actually got to change what he's actually what he's serving. So Michael Martinez is pretty much on point here. Like if he removes images and third-party scripts, it'll probably speed things up pretty you know pretty immensely. Yeah. All right. I have uh, J Lo uh, is. Um happy with uh, our response and we'll move on to number 12 from AJM Verma um, pre preventing um, duplicate content and unnecessary link juice uh, dilution I hate using that word um, <laughs> anyway um, he said hey guys my first post in this group well, well welcome AJ um, he said, mine is a single author website. Currently, the below archives are enabled and set to index. I guess these are um, uh, WordPress terms, author-based archive, data date-based archive, and format-based uh, archive. No idea what uh, that it is, um, neither do I. Um, to prevent uh, the duplicate content issue or unnecessary link juice dilution, should I disable them and set to no index? 
Please, God. Thanks. Turn off author base because you've only got one author. Okay. So it actually that that archive has no value because it's going to show the exact same posts as your main archive, as in the index page is going to show. So it is no value. So turn it off. Date date based archives. Um, probably turn that off as well. I mean, it, again, I don't think really too many people are going to be. It depends on how much content you're turning out. But generally speaking, I don't know. I've never really gone to a site and said, oh, I'd like to see everything you posted in December. Unless <laughs> they're post, I mm. know that you published in December and I'm looking for it. Then it can be helpful. But I mean, that's an edge case. Um, I would just yeah. go with, with maybe category archives. Like turn off tags as well. Like go with tags or categories, but not both. And probably in this case, I just turn off all archives, maybe apart from categories. Depends a little bit on how big his site is and how much content he has. I mean, if he's got thousands of pages, it might make more sense. But if it's single author, he doesn't have too much content, go with his primary index, as in the home page and the sub pages, and perhaps categories. And that's it. Thank you, Richard. Yeah, everything that Richard said, yeah, get rid of them, disable them, don't confuse the world with them. Um, yeah. And by the way, don't use no in like don't put stuff up and use no index because if as your site gets bigger, Google still has to crawl all this stuff to see the no index, and you're sort of just wasting bandwidth with that. And also, you're just you know you're creating more internal links. You know, if you have a solid structure, you should have no need to add in more archives to get Google to crawl stuff. That's just not going to happen. Thank you, Richard. Okay, we're powering through these. We've only got three to go. Um, this one from Nazmun Naha. Um, it's titled, No Technical Issues But Still Not Indexed. Nazmun said, hey, guys, we have compiled a really good content on page optimized and targeted keywords are not highly competitive. But I, I still can't see the page even in the, the top 100. Yeah, I, I can't find any technical issues. Could anyone please have a look at advice? And he gives a URL, which can be seen on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Oh, no, if I'd known, only I'd known, I wouldn't have had that question. I hate crypto people. Yeah, no, no, but, but let, let's, 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 again, take a step back. The page, it, well, now, it may not have been when, the, when this, this question was posted, but the page is indexed. So... If you notice in the question, it says no technical issue, but still not indexed. And then the, this is de, this how they define this is by saying they looked in the top 100 and they can't see it. There's a very big distinction. Your page can be indexed, and it may not appear in the top 100 or top 1,000, depending on what the term is. Um, like how to invest in Bitcoin. Now, I'm going to hazard a guess. I know quite a lot of crypto people, and I'm going to hazard a guess that there must be thousands, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of sites that are trying to target how to invest in Bitcoin, okay? Because that's a money term. There's a lot of money to be made out of this, yeah? You know, you just, if you get, if you write number one for this and you put in some affiliate links, you're probably going to make a living out of it. So maybe not today, but certainly last year, you would have been turning money over, hand over foot. But the, 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 the fact is that the page is indexed. It just doesn't rank. There's a very big difference between in get, having something indexed and having it rank well. So, you know, you've got to look and see how competitive is the niche that you're trying to target. And then you've got to say, like, why should my page rank better than the ones that are there? And you've got to look at the sites you're competing with and see, you know, how much link value have they got coming into them in general, how much link value is coming into the page. You know, a term like this, this is worth a fortune to rank for. You know, you're going to invest big money to rank for this. So there, there's nothing. The only advice you can give is is make build something that's just out of this world good, promote it, and hope that people link into it. Um, but like the crypto scene is, it, it's a dirty scene where there's a lot of side deals go on around everything. So you can be sure the same goes on with the web stuff. You know, you're going to have to beg people probably to get this to rank. Yeah. 
the, the thing I'd say to Nazmo, if if he wants to build a long term business on the in internet, he should seek out opportunities that have an ethical base. Um, like, here you go, Richard. I, I can. No, see no, 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 I'm not talking you. I just went to look at their page. You keep going, Jim. I'll come in in a minute. <laughs> okay. But yeah, look. Uh, if if you want to last, uh, Nesman, uh, I mean, as Richard said uh, last year, um, when um, cryptocurrencies were, and I don't know that the thing, but Bitcoin was about to get getting up towards was it twenty thousand dollars or something yep. like that. And it, it's now down to about four. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, and and it's 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 a. Um, it's a shonky deal. There's nothing backing uh, cryptocurrency. I, I, I mean, the only people are still pumping it um, are, um, are drug dealers and, um, and those guys that um, lock your, your computer and uh, say that, that we found you masturbating on the internet. What's that, Richard? Is that what they told you? <laughs> it's all like uh, me watching. No, no, well, I was not, was not. Um, so, Jim, I'm going to tell you the reason I'm tutting is okay. If you go and visit that page, so first off, the initial view they have some content about how to get started, okay, and they have it in an element that is. A scrollable element on the page so there's only the first two paragraphs that are visible and then you've got to physically scroll there's plenty of space in the page but this is the way they built it so it's it's so that's the first part of it and then you have to click on the bottom elements in the page which actually mean that there's a carousel so a lot of their content is actually it's not visible to the user you've actually got to scroll around and click buttons and all like it's basically a tabbed interface with uh, uh, an element which is is constrained, and there's a scroll bar on the right hand side that you've got to scroll. Now it looks nice, but from an SEO perspective, I would hazard a guess that if they actually put this into a plain page that you scrolled top to bottom with a regular with your regular browser window, and um, it may rank better. I think a lot of the content they've got in this page is going to be suppressed because it's not visible. Yeah, so if the user can't see it, neither can the robots. So they can see it, but they know that it's not visible. Because the, the, the search engines, like, I mean, they've been doing it for a long time. Like, they, they've been rendering stuff. And, you know, this began with block level stuff that they did. And now they render things fully. But they know that, like, you know, the how to get Bitcoins and best cryptocurrency trading platforms. They know that that content is in, a, is in basically a carousel element. That you've, got to, you've got to click to get to it. So to them, they're going to suppress that, certainly on desktop. Now, I'm not sure how, how, what, it, what it does on mobile. I'm just going to have a just quick look because I'm curious about how it works on mobile, uh, if it does. And it's something very similar on mobile. So I, I'm going to say that I suspect that the implementation that they've done, like now it looks nice, it doesn't look bad, but the implementation they use here is actually costing them. And that it's not helping this page to rank. The mobile is a little bit better, but I still think that this carousel feature probably isn't isn't the best way to do it. Yeah, it's a nice design. I mean, you know, I haven't looked at the con. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know whether they've got affiliate links in there or whether whether it's it's you know they're actually promoting themselves or what they're doing but my guess is that you know that that the way they've laid the page out isn't going to help them fantastic richard um okay so um Nesman, i hope uh, you find that useful and um you got it from one of the best uh, the, the only thing i'd suggest is what, what, what you use use anything that you make out of uh, this side into uh, finding a, 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 a worthwhile industry to, to promote. Um, anything from you, David? 
No, I I, I agree totally. Um, I hate these uh, these over designed, over engineered sites. Um, I I I just want to get into the content and read it and. Uh, if it's making it difficult for me and if I have to think about how do I get to the next page and so on and so forth, I don't like it. And I, I fully uphold uh, Google not liking this sort of thing and not ranking it very well. Excellent. Okay, number 14, our penultimate uh, question. Uh, Johnny Cryer asks how to get to top position in Google. He's, um, again, uh, we did have this discussion in the green room. Uh, um, the dumb SEO questions give us the opportunity to uh, lead Johnny Cryer onto the path of true enlightenment. Um, he, uh, he says, uh, when new businesses and opportunities come out and members are all given the same replicated website with their username on the end of the link, uh, example, suchandsuch.com slash username, how uh, do some people, how are they able to get uh, top position in Google and other search engines? Uh, and of course, the answer to that is to, to um, uh, well, no, I won't say that. But um, anyway, guys, look, I'll leave it to you to. Um, no, 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 go ahead. Well, you know, they, I mean, they, they might well be uh, in the top position in Google, but they probably did it with some nefarious practice, which uh, um, will only last for a week or two, and then uh, your site uh, will be tanked, and um, th those of your children's children will also be tanked. It's quite true, you know. I mean, this, but then again, I mean, this can be set up in different ways so that, you know, just because one member gets tanked, it doesn't affect the others. I mean, it is possible. But it's funny, I mean, this is an interesting sort of conundrum because all things are equal. So at the end of the day, every, every member or user is getting the same site. And the question really then is that, yeah, everyone's got the same content. So at the end of the day, the only thing that can, be, can differ between the different users is authority. So it's about getting links to those member pages or those member sites, I'll call them. I mean, you know, it could be the guys who just know how this works. They're the ones who get it to rank best. I mean, it, I think they're like, if you had a competition, okay, you could go nefarious and get it ranking quickly and probably get booted out at some point. But, you know, if you have a, a sort of network of, let's say, people who are, you know, suppliers or who you're, supplying to downstream or whatever it might be and they have sites if they start linking to your particular profile on this opportunity such and such dot com site um, you may start to see that you'll rank better than everybody else who isn't doing these who isn't actually getting links into their profile so I think there's a way you know I think it's it's just a matter of figuring out is it worth your while like are there other people who know how to do this much better than you who are on the same such and such dot com website and if there's not, there's probably uh, some potential for you to try to get, you know, half decent links into your own site and get your site to outrank the other members. Profound. Okay. All right. Uh, let's um, go to our, our next. This one from Dragomir Victor, who's uh, already an, an accomplished uh, SEO. Um, and he asks a, a simple question, what is the best advanced SEO guide or book? Um, and we had um, um, some, some responses uh, to have a look at uh, a, a category on uh, Search Engine Journal, which can be seen uh, on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, How many modal windows will you have to close before you can view the content? <laughs> Jenny Halaz said something apt. Um, she said, uh, Art of SEO is solid. I also like marketing in the age of Google as it gets beyond SEO and into topic ma mapping, which is more effective. Uh, I imagine David Razam might have a comment on that. 
I must admit, I've never read it. So uh, you've just put me into a complete corner there. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's why I never ask a question on this. <laughs> SEO is going to be broad, though. I don't think that there, would, there would be any one book that would cover it. You know, I mean, you've got SEO for like JavaScript, like this topic modeling that you mentioned about, you know, entity modeling, knowledge graphs. There's so many different areas now that are sort of under this SEO umbrella. Um, you know, it may be better just to try and find, you know, some of the best people at doing some of this stuff who share a lot online and, and trying to learn from them. I mean, they're, I think SEO, we're sort of looking in a way that in some cases we have some areas where there's some very generous and giving people who do share a lot of research and knowledge um, but I, I would probably try to say, rather than trying to learn about SEO, I would try and look at one particular area of SEO and focus on it and try and learn it as best you can, rather than trying to learn a lot. I mean, even just in those 15 questions, there were some things there. I mean, we had like how to get video, YouTube video ranking. I mean, I'm sure there's guys, all they do is video SEO. As I know, there are guys, and all they do is JavaScript-based stuff. And then there's, you know, there's all these. It, it can be very good to focus on just one area, and try and learn it well. And depending on his background, like if he's a developer, you know, maybe he could look and see. Well, what was he developing? Like, is he full stack, or you know, does, does he know JavaScript, for instance? Maybe he'd focus on that area of SEO. It would be better than than looking for a book that's more rounded, let's say. You know, mm. search changes so quickly. Like these books, I'm sure they may be, some of them may be very good, but you know, within a year or two, you have to be careful. There could be some stuff in there that actually, not that it's just out of date, but it could actually get you in trouble. And at the time they wrote it, it might have been perfectly acceptable. So. And um, with the, the, the problem with books, of course, is the lead time as well. Um, you know, what we read on, on the web is hopefully up to date. Uh, mm -hmm. There isn't any lead time, but a, a book, particularly if it goes to a major publisher, could, could be months between manuscripts and print. I mean, it, you know, when when Google killed off Reader, you know, I think it changed consumption patterns for a lot of people. You know, I mean, I used to spend a lot of time reading blogs, and now I don't so much. You know, now I'm getting information via Twitter, and then I'm just looking at some links that I might want to jump to and actually going and reading, but. Um, there's a part of me that I'm, I'm sort of still disgusted that Google sort of killed off RSS by killing off Reader. Yeah. And I wish it was still there because that would be, to be honest, that, you know, having a, a good collection of feeds in a Reader is probably better than any book you'll ever get. Yeah. Well, the, the only time that John Mueller um, was ever... Um, vocally uh, anti-google i think um he really wanted re reader to remain um but um yeah google it, it, it stuffs up so many things i mean look at google plus uh, chats hangouts hangouts uh, are being painted out well you know sometimes they go after something and they'll try it and they'll you know they'll either fail early and, and dump it or they'll sort of keep trying as with google plus it's still around but I mean, you know, they went after a fairly, that was a, a very significant strategy to go after Google Plus. So I suppose when you think about it, like they had to, they went all in, they really committed to it. And then to reverse it back out isn't trivial, you know, because they ingrained it into all their systems. So, you know, there's part of me can understand why, you know, in that it's still around, it's still lingering because it's not easy for them to turn off. Um, the reader thing, you know, one thing that sort of grinds my gears is, you know, Google are, you know, they have a lot of problems with Google News at the moment, especially in the EU. And, you know, Google come out and say, like, it's a non-profit product for us, you know, as if they're not using all the data of what people are looking at and all the rest of it to form better profiles for advertising and targeting, you know? I mean, it's just, you know, I think part of the reason Reader, they killed off Reader was because they actually couldn't use data in the same way to target ads against people and that's probably the truth of it you know yeah well i still read rss feeds via feedly which is a uh a, a nice way of reading them 
Yeah, no, I know. And a lot of people, I think I did try it at one stage, but I just, I suppose I was so, um, you know, I mean, I'm, it's not, I mean, back then, it's not like I'm that old now and I was a lot younger when they probably turned it off, but I, I was just so used to it. And I, it was just, it, my, my consumption was formalized around Google Reader. So, yeah, I never, never moved over. Yeah. Tell me something. Um, um, I, I think we've we've given a good answer for for uh, Dragomir Victor. Um, and um, but uh, anyway, here's my question. While, while I've got some people to talk to that um, might that would would know, uh, I, I've um, recently um, put in a, a couple of. Um, Amazon Echo Dots around the house, and we've got a, a Sonos One and, and so on. Um, where 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 is SEO going with um, my my searches um, via, via Amazon Echo Dot, etc.? Uh, my, I, I've actually done a quite a bit of work on this, um, which has been enjoyable and actually very very interesting and fascinating to look at what, what's going on and where I think this is going is um, this all comes back to this knowledge graph you know that Google has and they're not the only ones who are building knowledge graphs I mean there's actually it's surprising to see how many companies now are sort of trying to build internal knowledge graphs and um, where it's really going with this is those knowledge graphs because they're the drivers of a lot of this the, this answers and the, the you know to allow these systems to understand what you're asking them. So entity search and you know building content around entities is probably where things are gonna go. And actually that was mentioned there about topic mapping, which is in a, in a sense that is also like a topic is, it's an entity. Um, not necessarily, but they're very similar. And that's probably where things are going in a big way. You know, there's an awful lot of information out there. So I work with a couple of papers, and you know, the amount of information and knowledge they have from their journalists and their articles, but actually they've no real easy way to map all this and to figure it all out. And you know, if they could, there's opportunities there. Now, some are better than others. I mean, you look at someone like The Guardian, and they have, a, you know, they've got a massive sort of topics engine that runs on their site and actually delivers them a lot of SEO benefits as well. But I'm pretty sure that later on down the road, it's going to benefit them more when it comes into this sort of voice search stuff because it's it's all sort of driven by featured snippets, what we see as featured snippets on the desktop or the mobile. And that's generally driven by knowledge graphs and entity recognition. And this is really, I think, where it's going. But I mean, it's a, a lot of companies, I work with some companies and they're big, but their products actually aren't indexed as entities in the knowledge graph. And, you know, that's the first steps you're, we're at with a lot of companies. They have to actually figure out, well, what do we have that actually search engines might might need to know as an entity and might represent as an entity in, in when someone actually queries something. And that's the first step. But Google, you know, all this structured data, you know, with schema.org and JSON-LD, that they that Google now recognise that is all built around entities, all entity based, and you know it's all in in order to 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 increase the size of their knowledge graph. So like a lot of people have taken first steps, but there's just a lot more to do. You know, it's really at its infancy. Yeah, but that's where you're when you're using those little those little fellas. A lot of it is actually coming. You know, some of it. Maybe not, you know, there's, 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 some of it won't be, but a lot of what's going on there where it's generic stuff, if you're not just sort of saying what's the weather like, well, it's probably grabbing that from somewhere as well. Um, but it's really, really focused on entities. They're trying to figure out what is it you're looking for and give context to what you've asked for. And yeah, it's, it's a, it's a fascinating area, but um, it's, 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 it's pretty advanced stuff for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I could think of an intelligent question to ask because I'd love to know more. <laughs> anyway, we've done that, it again. That was great, Richard.
That was really interesting. Yeah. All right. We, we've done it again, guys. We've answered all of the questions asked on the SEO Questions community on Google Plus and the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, if you're still watching us, thank you. Uh, your interest in, in what we do makes uh, what we do worthwhile, and, and uh, we are um, grateful for that. We'll be back um, at the same time next week to do this all again. But uh, until then, uh, it's um, good night. And I thank uh, David Rosam and uh, Tim Kappa and Richard Hearn uh, for uh, uh, participating. Okay.